A simple explanation of the consolidation theory of memory is it's an explanation of the process involved in the formation of a long-term memory over time. So we're talking about, with the ad rehearsal, moving something from short-term memory to a permanent memory trace in our LTM. A key aspect of consolidation is LTP, long-term potentiation, which refers to the long-lasting enhancement of synaptic transmission. Thus, the same group of neurons fire together so that they become permanently sensitised to each other. Thus, the brain rewires itself by establishing new connections and rearranging its organisation. But the two key points for the VCE psychology course is that in order for a long-term memory to be consolidated, the memory trace must have a chance to be set and this takes time. Thus, if the consolidation process is interrupted, we'll have forgetting. If there's no interruption to the consolidation process, then the memory trace will form and we'll have a relatively permanent memory. We might not be able to access that memory later in time due to retrieval failure, for instance, because of the absence of the right cue. If there's an interruption to the consolidation process, then that neural or memory trace will never set. Thus, the memory will be forgotten. It will never actually be established in our long-term memory. The medial temporal lobe is the structure involved in the consolidation of declarative or explicit memories, in particular the hippocampus. But it's important to note that the hippocampus is not the storage site of these declarative or explicit memories. It's merely involved in the consolidation process. And we know that from people like HM or Clive Waring who suffered damage to the hippocampus and can still retrieve long-term memories that were made prior to their brain injury, but they were unable to form new declarative or explicit memories due to damage to their hippocampus. The consolidation could not occur. The amygdala, amygdala also plays a role in the mo modulation of memories, particularly in terms of the emotional aspects of episodic memories, and that's worth noting. In terms of evidence of the consolidation theory, well, if you've ever been knocked out like I have been, you'll probably have gaps in your memory of the incidents that led up to that head trauma. Excessive alcohol causes memory failure because maybe the victim has blacked out, interrupting the cons um, consolidation process. Interference is quite a common one for school students, which explains why we forget a lot of the stuff from period one, because the consolidation is being interrupted by some of the content that's being covered in period two. ECT, electroconvulsive treatment, which has been used to treat depression, literally interrupts the consolidation process, so we have a loss of a memory of the events leading up to that ECT treatment. We know that consolidation is enhanced based on studies done of people who've learned information and then slept on it and then have a better recall of that information the following day.